Well, hi, and thanks for coming and joining me here in my shop. I'm going to be taking a look at this meter I've received from Banggood, and uh, we're going to check it out. Let's see what the box says here. True RMS multimeter NT92 from a company called Mustool. Mustool. Special features. One hand operation design. I think that's probably the main the main main thing about this meter. Easy to carry with buckle. Well, it has a way of clipping it on your belt. I think that's what they mean there. Slot for test lead. Uh, it's kind of the same thing as one hand operation design. Three modes of operation. I don't know what they're talking about there. 6,000 counts, must be counts per second. True RMS, resistance, capacitance, frequency, temperature, voltage alert, continuity check, milliamp current. Here's something interesting. Live wire check. Data hold. So, uh, live wire check. So I think, you know, offhand, if, you're bu if you've got a shop like mine, you're trying to fix old vacuum tube radios, this is probably not the best kind of meter to get. Uh, but I think like all modern meters and equipment, uh, this is probably just fine uh, for general purposes. Comes with a nice little manual book here. First part's Chinese, second part is English. That means they're selling this in China too. Uh, it doesn't look like Chinese, any Chinese writing on here. So this must be the North American version of this. It's turned off right now. Temperature sensor, something I've never ever made use of, I don't think. On any meters, I got a number of meters that have thermocouple, thermocouples. So there we go. Okay, plug in the top. One hand. Let's see. Now, I've already put batteries in it. One hand. There we go. So right now it's reading, let's see here, DC volts. So I see the symbol says DC AC volts. This is AC, DC milliamps. So you just have a voltage setting. Um, I wonder what happens when you mix AC and DC together with this meter. That's an interesting question. Uh, okay, so it defaults to ohms, but here we've got ohms, capacitance, diode checker. I think it push the select button for each one of those settings. Let's try. Okay, so that says ohms, uh, volts. I think it's a millivolt range, I believe. This is a nanofarad, so that's a capacitor. And we're back to ohms. That's a, that's a hertz button. There we go. So now it's reading frequency. Well, that's kind of interesting. Hey, look at that. 60. That's not 6,000. That's 60. So it's picking up the 60 hertz hum in my shop. The leads are just laying right there. It's just picking the hum up. That's kind of interesting. Hmm. That says the most powerful radio signal you could even call this a radio signal. The most powerful electromagnetic signal here in my shop is a 60 hertz. Just flying around. Probably true all over the house, right? Okay, that means it also means the input sensitivity is very, very high on this. At least in the hertz. I would have to imagine it's a 10, 10 mega ohm input. So here's the cool feature of this guy. You take one of your leads probably a red one normally. Stick it in the side. This is an old idea. I, gotta sh I have an old meter. I'll show you this exact same feature. So now, because you only have two hands, right? Well, I only have two hands. Maybe you have three. So 
So uh, with two hands, you've got everything, right? You've got both leads. You could, you could, in many cases, I'm doing this. I'm grounding this negative lead to something, and then I could really one-hand it here. Very awkward in a shop like this to, to, to use an instrument of this sort. This really isn't, you know, it's really much better to have a couple of leads in your hand and the meter is sitting, sitting like, like some of mine are, just sitting over here all the time in one spot. But in a shop like mine, one of the benefits of a meter like this is, is there's no question, it is not grounded. It has no, it's not plugged in the wall, so it has no uh, grounding issues with it. So you can test anywhere you want in the circuit here and not worry. If you're grabbing one of these, uh, the, 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 there's a little more worry. But if you go to use a meter like this one, yeah. this this uh, is grounded right back to the power system. I mean, you have to be very careful fooling around in a radio like this with a meter like that. Not so much with one of these. So if you're going to run a shop like mine and you're going to have one instrument, you're just going to buy one meter. Maybe you have one radio you want to fix one time. You don't want to load up a huge shop full of stuff like this. Um, you know, this would be a, a suitable meter. Uh, like I say, just about any modern meter is going to work for you. It's just a question of convenience. But I think this is a really much better around the house type meter. Let's try this live thing. So I have it switched to live. get something that's live in here. What have I got that's live? Okay. Bring this over here. Okay, so there's 125 volts coming to this outlet. Now some of these you just hold it up to the cable and uh, this isn't doing anything, is it? I'm pretty sure in the instructions it said you didn't touch this to the conductor in question. But you notice the uh, prongs on here are a lot different than other meter meter uh, other meters. Let me, let me get one to show you what I mean. Now this is a lot more common. We have a large amount of bare contact here. This one is just right at the very tip. Where does these come off? Something's going off. Ha! Huh. Well, okay, so I didn't realize that until just now. That's pretty neat. So you can have the long piece if you want it, or you can restrict it like this. Now, for instance, the long piece, I need it. Actually, I need it on the red one. Let's try that again. Get the red, get the red. Red one. Oh, it's on here. <laughs> okay, pull that off. What was the beep? I don't know what the beep was. Me squeezing something. Now, the question is, well this, I'm going to pull this black lead right out of here. So there's no black lead. All just red. Common here, input here. So I got the red into the input. Will this guy tell me this outlet's live? Jumping up and down to do it. Oh, there it goes. And on the meter, can, can you read what it said on the meter there? I'm gonna go again. Hmm, but what made it go? So what it's relying on is uh, you as a uh, uh, sort of a grounded element. You're putting your hand around it. You've then uh, got some kind of capacitive connection between the meter and your hand and, and ground. I'm not grounded, I'm, uh, but I guess I'm, I'm good enough as a ground for the meter. So it's a, that's, a, that's a little wonky, uh, but it will work. 
So you can go to a fuse panel or something like that and check if you want it, but wow, you really need to, you would need to prove to yourself that this meter is doing what you think it's doing before you start relying on it for this particular test. Now I'm going to grab another meter. Have I got it right here? Is it right here? My other, uh, my other big, I just had it the other day also not the kind of thing you'd use in a shop. So I'm going to run and find that other meter and show it to you. Ooh, it took me a long time to find this. Turns out it was just hanging on the wall a foot away from me here. So now this, this is a classic meter. Sorry it's tangled up here. There we go. Sort of we go. Sound like something loose? There's a buzzer in here. It comes with these two contacts. I know these don't look original, do they? Fit in like this. And there you are. You have the same the same idea. And you're an electrician working on a fuse panel or something. You, you, you no longer require three hands to operate this. Hey, let's make this go. Yeah, not sure I've turned this on for a while. 124 volts. Now, I don't think one lead... Oh my gosh, I can go stick that in there. Oh, look at that. Spring, spring loaded. It also looks like it's been blasted. Not by me. Somebody. So maybe that'll go in there? Yep. Yeah, what would I say? I need three hands now. <laughs> my, my outlet's not fixed to the wall here. Let's see if I can shove on it. There. So, well, can you see? Can you even see what happened on the meter there? Maybe not. Turn off more lights in my shop here for you to see this. Hold on. Okay. This this should work now. So you see, it's a little tricky in the camera here, but so three lights were coming on here. This one, this one, and this one here this bright yellow one. Black, red, 600, 80 to 600 volts. So this light comes on when you're over 80 volts. So it's on. You can hear a relay or something moving in the meter here. Then this light, you know, I almost never use this. AC, both lights on, 6 to 600 volts. And then a DC continuity if one light's on. So it's really not telling you very much. So now there's a meter scale popping up and down in here. That's actually, I think that might be what we're hearing. I give myself a shock here. So if you watch in this part, which is really gain, you can't even see it on camera here. There is a pointer which is shot up to 120. By the way, I'm showing you this because this is this is the classic one-hander meter. Uh, yeah, see, that's not the right, that's not the right thing. So anyway, okay, enough for one. -hander. Well, while I was looking for that one, I found another one-hander meter <laughs> that I have. So you see what they've done here? They just have these uh, ear clips or clips sticking out like this. Now, wh why two? Probably because. Sometimes you want it on this side, and sometimes you want it on that side. No, you wouldn't clip both in and try to contact something. But that, that's that's how uh, the problem of uh, only having two hands is overcome with these things. 
Okay, so bottom line on this meter, just going back to this one, is a uh, nice bright scale to read. Uh, that's really nice. And uh, like for instance, if you go into a dark area to work and you've got a regular meter, good luck. But one of these, that's beautiful. And has all the different features on here that you can mess around with. So it's, it's pretty much covers everything, like any multimeter. It has a voltage alert button here. I guess you can turn on some kind of alert. Or maybe turn off. V alert on. So, so yeah. You know, in today's world, in, in an uh, electronic shop, uh, voltages over 30, 40, 50 volts, not so common. In an old style shop like mine, where I'm fixing, whoops, I'm fixing, sorry about that, fixing uh, antique radios and the like, yeah, voltages under 40 volts aren't all that common. So, so that's the dramatic difference between this kind of tube work, which is voltage, not current, and moderate equipment, transistorized equipment, which is current, not voltage. So, anyway, just the last thing I will say about this meter is it's a must tool mt92 not not expensive there you go well thanks for watching and uh, i'll get back to fixing radios now